Hello and welcome to Forbes India from the field. A show where eminent athletes speak to us about what it takes to excel. Our guest today is Kumar Sangakkara, one of the modern era greats in cricket. A prolific keeper batter across formats, the 43-year-old has over 28,000 international runs, second only to Sachin Tendulkar. He has also led Sri Lanka to the final of the 2011 ODI World Cup. In 2019, Sangakkara became the first non-British person to be appointed the president of the MCC. Recently, he was inducted into the ICC Hall of Fame. Earlier this year, Sangakkara took over as the director of cricket for Rajasthan Royals, looking to turn around its fortunes in the IPL. In this episode, he speaks about the leadership takeaways from his illustrious career. Well, I think there are certain characteristics that you're born with that enable you to become a leader. Uh, but without learning and refining those, and really understanding, uh, you know that uh, leadership is not just about yourself, but also about others. Uh, and that engendering leadership in others makes your job uh, very, very easy. Um, uh, it's, it's difficult to really have others follow you and buy into your 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 philosophy. Uh, leadership is is really about stewardship and service, um, and it's about empowering, guiding, making others better. And your role as a leader, starting from being a very prominent one over time, if you're doing a great job, it goes into the background because you you've done that job of stewarding people and enabling people and helping them become better. Um, and that is the real key to key to leadership. Uh, and I think stewardship and service is very important because. Uh, a lot of these players who play under you will probably leave at some point, join other franchises. There'll be a, a churn, but they will carry uh, lessons that they've learned under Sanju beyond the Rajasthan Royals and beyond cricket itself. You know, it's a lot about taking responsibility in cricket. Usually, you know, when you win, it's it's always others, and when you lose as a as a captain, you've got to always be able to step up and say say I or me or you know, and to be accountable. Have to be able to make decisions, uh, spot decisions. Sometimes, sometimes decisions based on experience and data and stats and, and information. Uh, but you have to temper knowledge and all of those information with a bit of wisdom. And wisdom comes with experience, uh, and, and, and applying that knowledge in a practical sense and learning lessons from it. Uh, if you're if you're afraid of making a mistake, if you're going to be afraid of losing a game, it's very very difficult to. Then make decisions that are positive. Uh, that sometimes need a calculated risk. In cricket, when I started, one of the first pieces of advice I got uh, that only guarantee as a batsman is that I'll fail. Um, but once you're aware of the risks and aware of th- not just those possibilities, but the game scenarios that might you'll encounter along that journey, that's when you can really plan, you can strategize, you can pick the right people to do the job for you. Uh, on the field, um, and then uh, when you're when you're faced with a decision, you make really practical, uh, proactive decisions that meet the needs of not just the moment, but also uh, meet the needs of anticipatory uh, kind of awareness of what might happen down the line, 15, 20 minutes down the line. Uh, being afraid is and, and be fearing failures is natural in all of us, but what it can't do is is is, is paralyze you, like I said before, where you're just stuck and you're stunted. Uh, and you don't grow or improve, or you don't even make a decision. You need to have year-round connection, year-round dialogue, year-round plans for your players, so that between IPLs, that you're in touch, they still feel a part of the Rajasthan Royals family, um, and 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 they have plans put in place for them, uh, depending on the season pass, that makes them better players when they come back for for the next season. Uh, you can't leave them in isolation from season to season, and then it's almost like starting anew. So, uh, for the franchise, uh, 
uh, and for any franchise, I think that connect is very, very important, especially when you come to, to younger players and young Indian players to have a center of excellence where they can go and train, where they can give and be given specific practice plans, specific fitness plans, uh, specific plans for their, their mental skill improvement. All of that really counts, not just in season, but from season to season. And when you have that connect and when players do arrive back, it's not as if they were right back to the completely new structure. A little subtle changes in attitude, in mindset, can go a long way towards actually improving how players view each other and thereby how players interact with each other and especially come together as a, as a team. I, I see attitude is something that you can really control. Uh, whether you're training, whether you're interacting with players, you know, how you function as an individual really has an impact on, on other people. So you need to control that attitude. It helps you in training, it helps you in matches, and it really helps you to become a valued member of the team. Um, and that attitude uh, that you bring with you, you know, there are subtle differences. You know, some are a little bit more reflective, some are more expressive, some are more dominant, more forceful, uh, some are more prudent. Uh, but everyone has a place and if you can create a, a culture where that attitude is welcomed um, and uh, that attitude is valued and those opinions and personalities are valued uh, and you and you and you create those spaces for them to be to function as well as anyone else um, players really trust it you need to bring that diverse mindsets opinions characters personalities into the mix and then you need to understand how you can motivate some or the others you know some need clarity some need uh, you know more an inspired more emotional kind of connect uh, to do well uh, some need to be really valued and appreciated uh, others need to be uh, reasoned with and given logical explanations as to why we're doing what we're doing but the really important thing is to not constantly barrage them with too much information or to be you know kind of um, telling them what to do. Uh, it is getting their ideas, uh, you know, and, and talking about the team strategy and getting them to contribute. So each one has a sense of ownership, uh, has has a sense of motivation to achieve that goal. And once you create that, those individual spaces for them within that team, um, and everyone understands the, the roles of one another, the personalities, the attitudes, the characters, uh, then it becomes a lot easier to, to go and execute a plan that we've all been a part of creating. When you talk about leadership, it's about making them lead themselves and also others in difficult situations because leadership is usually very situational. And even though you're the nominated captain, there could be a situation where you play no part in the game. If you got out and you're out in the bench, uh, you know, and you understand your players better and how each one should be spoken to and communicated to and how each one can be motivated. Uh, you can bring that together into the unit. Uh, you know, people take a lot of pride in belonging to a franchise, in a lot of pride in their own ability. Trust is, is really initially built in a, in a cricket team on competence. Uh, knowing uh, that your teammates are as good as you and are prepared as well as you uh, and are ready as you are to go out there and perform to the best of their abilities because that is important for you to know and have confidence in your teammates that you're ready to take on the challenge and, and, and win a game. Okay, let's get on the train. Good morning. Good morning.